How do I write a good research paper? How do I improve my academic writing skills? What can I do to increase my chances in a job interview? How do I curate the best resume for my dream job? Ever since the beginning of Christ deemed to be university, need has been felt to bridge the gap between the seekers of knowledge and the source. For that, Christ deemed to be university, through the Center of Academic and Professional Support, CAPS, brings you India's first professional online writing lab, providing students with opportunities for self-learning at their own pace. We aim to offer expert consultation and peer interaction opportunities to all Christites at free of cost. Our one-on-one -on -one interactive sessions, online tests and digital certificates adds on to a better learning experience for the users. At Christ Online Writing Lab, we provide assistance at all times to our diverse audience and help them to enrich their professional and academic skills. Some of the courses that we offer are appearing for a job interview, resume writing, out of note taking, introduction to professional communication, research writing and academic writing. In contemporary times, accessibility is the key to education. It is the only way that allows us to tap into everyone's potential. With the advent of digital medium, education is now available to everyone who wants to learn. This is our contribution to the history of Indian digital education. Christ Online Writing Lab Hello, welcome back to another module on the art of photography. Today, I'll be taking you through a few of the live examples. But before that, I will just answer a few of the questions and queries that you have. Uh, most of you felt that it should have been more interactive and also there should have been more practical uh, examples and assignments as well. Well, due to the limitations that we have, uh, we are not able to do that. We'll try our best to at least address few of them. Fine. Now, Rishabh and Nishita wanted to have more interactive sessions and also assignments. Well, in terms of assignments, I feel maybe you can try taking your own photographs and judge uh, based on like how you used to do before and uh, based on what you have learned, how you are going to, I mean, how, how you will be doing further. So maybe that you can take as an assignment. And uh, if you want to get uh, further updates or maybe like if you want to ask uh, more questions, maybe CAPS will uh, try to find out some ways for that. You'll have to wait for it. Now, rest of them, like they wanted it to be more practicals. Well, I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, take a photograph in different conditions. Now, right now, there's too much of sunlight and uh, the way we are taking right now. If it's a normal person, maybe you'll be just taking like this. But then, you know, uh, the angle at which I'm taking is not proper. So you can just go down to the eye level and this looks better. But at the same time, if you look at the backdrop, there are some uh, cables going behind which may not look uh, that great if you take a snap so you'll have to avoid that plus the sunlight is very harsh and uh, you can see patches on the face so this is not an ideal condition to take photographs uh, so what you can do is you can either move the uh, subject around or you can move around the subject and find out a better place to take the photograph so right now what i am going to do is i'm going to change the position and let's see if you can find out a different location to get a photograph in this condition. Well, uh, now I have taken her to a shade, but still the background is not so pleasing. So I have to still find a better place to take the photograph to avoid these kind of distractions. Well, uh, now I have found a better location. It's in the shade, so you don't have harsh sunlight uh, coming onto the subject. Now the thing is like the background is also almost in focus. So how can we change that? Uh, 
uh, what I can do is I can increase the aperture right now it is at f20 tw uh, now I am going to increase the aperture so that we can get a background as blurred but when I increase the aperture you can see the entire thing has become so bright uh, so the next option I can go for is increase the shutter speed it was at 160 I am going to increase the shutter speed now the shutter speed is at 8000 that is the maximum I have in this camera but then again like you can see it is too bright my ISO is 2000 so I am going to reduce the ISO the ISO right now I have reduced I don't want an ISO more than 400 so I have kept it at 400 but now the image is slightly darker so what I can do is since I want the background to be blurred the next thing I would do is reduce the shutter speed now I am reducing the shutter speed it is at 3200 so this looks better now I angle it better you can see the background is very much blurred so if I get a if I take a snap this is how it's going to look and now if I keep the frame like this this may not be so good because it's centered so what I'll do is I'll take slightly off from the center towards the right so maybe up to certain extent it will be a little bit of rule of thirds but not exactly so this is how you are going to take the snap but what you have to keep in mind now you can see that the sunlight is uh, changing the clouds are covering the sun so here again if you find that there is a difference you have to make sure that the uh, settings are changed now again it is becoming brighter without making any, ad, uh, making any adjustments so what you have to do is keep the settings correct before you take the photograph fine so this is how it is going to be ok right now I found a different location now you can see this is uh, more pleasing even though it is uh, sunlight you have the clouds covering the sun so even at this condition you can get a better output the background is not too bright at the same time you can see on the corner there is a sunshade coming so this framing is not good so what you have to do is just slightly move and avoid that now this looks better so maybe you can take this as keep this as your frame and you can take the photograph you have a high aperture of 2.5 and the shutter speed is 2500 because it is so bright and the ISO is kept at 400 there was a suggestion in terms of uh, what I have spoken that is by GGC baby rule of thirds divides an image into three equal imaginary parts uh, not uh, nine equal parts uh, well when I was speaking I was speaking in terms of three equal parts horizontally and three equal parts vertically I started off with saying that uh, and later I was just saying three equal parts as you have noticed it is even though it is nine equal parts we are actually cutting the image into three equal parts horizontally and three equal parts vertically fine so please keep that in mind now coming to a few queries Tanya has asked uh, will you be helping us with the post processing of the images as well whether Lightroom is better or Photoshop is better I, again due to the lack of time and this uh, course is more about uh, basic photography not on editing so I'm sorry to say that I won't be able to touch up on that uh, to say whether Lightroom is better or Photoshop is better Photoshop has uh, different features Lightroom has different features though basic editing remains the same uh, so you cannot say which one is better Lightroom has its own advantages in terms of you can organize your files fine uh, Joanna has asked will there be specific sessions on different kinds of photography example nature bird even photography etc again I'm sorry to say that I won't be able to do that due to the lack of time and this course is uh, just a beginner level so it is not possible now Bridget Joseph has asked can you explain the cases of iOS users uh, well uh, whether you use iOS or any any uh, platform for that matter I have spoken about the basic settings and uh, features that is available uh, for different cameras so if you have those settings in your camera or whatever you are using you don't have to worry about anything else 
no matter what the platform you are using the basic of photography will remain the same fine now coming to azar what is the make of uh, make year of the yashika you showed in the video well uh, that is pretty old even i have no idea it is uh, uh, my uncle's uh, uh, camera that he used to use long ago it's uh, if i am not wrong it is more than 50 years fine uh, subarsh anandan has asked how to avoid the more dots per area and can you and tanish gupta has asked can you once again explain the concept of dots uh well i'll take you through that but before that if you well, as per subash you are asking like how to avoid the more dots per area actually the more dots per area is better because that will give more clarity uh you are try you are actually filling the holes or the gaps so that will actually give you more clarity so you don't have to avoid the dots but i'm not sure whether you meant uh in terms of the grain if it is grain then uh, uh, or the noise uh, uh, if if that is what you are looking for then you'll have to reduce your iso so i'm not sure about your question so this is what i have to say about it now let's look at uh, the concept about dots what you see here is a circle it's made of lot of dots if you start removing the dots from this you can see what happens just notice the edges you can see the quality deteriorates isn't it as we keep removing the dots it becomes horrible you can't even believe that this was a circle before this is how dots make an image the more number of dots the better the quality is so if you keep increasing the number of dots and fill up the gaps that means it is becoming more and more sharper well now another query that i have from sakshi frank is any suggestions which phone is better for its uh, camera quality well this question was uh, posted on the first day on the first uh, module i guess my second module has covered a bit of it and uh, i hope you are clear about it now srishti agarwal has asked i was not able to understand the whole point about film in the exposure section and i want to learn more about food photography again as i said earlier i was and uh, i don't have enough time to get into the details of uh, different genres or anything uh regarding the film uh, it was uh, it was uh, spoken about just to make few things clear uh, if you understand that it will be easy for you to understand exposure but uh, understanding about film is not the real uh, thing it is only uh, to help you out fine so if you understood exposure how it works that is more than enough or like if you are working on the exposure triangle and if you have understood that concept then you need not understand about this uh, sakshi frank has asked why does it happen that though the shutter speed is high sometimes we get very bright image and sometimes it's just light and not the image at all uh, well the reason is various fine so i cannot pinpoint on any particular reason uh, unless i know exactly you, uh, what mode that you are using for example if you are using a mobile phone or if you are using a dslr and i need to know the settings that you are using whether you are doing it in auto mode or you are doing it in a manual mode then again if it is in auto then what is the settings that you have in terms of the uh, camera or like if you are using manual settings what iso you have used or what aperture you have used and again uh, what is the light condition that you have a lot of factors are there so i may not be able to uh, answer that straight away but this video i hope will give you a better understanding on it if you notice here the image is too bright even though the shutter speed is too high this is mainly because either the iso or aperture is also very high you can compensate it by reducing the iso or increasing the f stop that means reducing the aperture now coming back uh, nikhil neema has asked what is the shutter count that uh, that was mentioned at the start uh, can it be explained more well shutter count is nothing but the number of shots that you are taking so each time you click a picture uh, as i said the shutter opens and closes so the shutter release is 
considered as a count so if you are taking if you are taking five photographs then your shutter count will be five so since you purchase your camera the number of photographs that you have taken is a shutter count fine now where what matters is most of the cameras will have a shutter count limit that means it's not that the camera is going to stop after that if you're lucky enough it will work further but usually cameras have a shutter count of around one lakh so beyond that if you take then uh, at any point in time your shutter might get spoiled uh, it's a normal thing that uh, uh, the dslrs will have a shutter count of around one lakh beyond that which the camera can i mean the shutter can get spoiled at any point in time so if you are going on clicking pictures then uh, there are chances that your shutter will get spoiled uh, for me usually it used to come for around two years now Sri Lekha has asked for a shutter speed it's a shutters and for aperture it's a flaps placed before the lens but for ISO which physical part of the camera if any are we trying to handle or operate uh, well ISO has nothing to do much about a mechanical uh, I mean a mechanism as such uh, this is more about the sensor uh, it's more uh, electronic in nature and if I have to explain that it's again it will take a whole lot of time because I have to explain a lot of electronics fine uh, so I'm sorry that I won't be able to help you on that what you have to keep in mind is uh, the sensor each uh, elements will be picking all the RGB colors separately and uh, it's trying to adjust that level so when it adjusts the level when the light is less that is what we are doing when we increase the ISO it's uh, there's a graph actually it is actually trying to uh, change the 100% uh, level slightly lower so it's almost like increasing the gain so when you try to uh, increase that then what will happen is the surrounding noises that which is actually existing always but when you are trying to uh, emphasize on these things that will also get emphasized so that is what will result in noise now Joanna has asked is it good to use manual or auto settings on the camera as a beginner well uh, what I would uh, say is if you are using auto settings then no matter whether you are a beginner or uh, the end user whatever it is you will always stick to that so I would suggest if you want to get better photographs and if you want to explore or if you want to get better please come out of the auto mode get to the manual mode of course it might take time for you to get adjusted to it because you have to make a lot of uh, changes in the settings based on the conditions uh, but then once you're used to it you'll know the difference and you can get better photographs just for a simple example if i'll tell you uh, if you are trying to take a uh, shot in auto focus then what will happen is if there are two objects the focus may vary in between or like when you try to take the uh, photograph you may not get the correct focus uh, so if you are in manual mode you know where to focus once you select the mode I mean once you select the focus then it is not going to change so you are directing the camera what you want and you will get what you are looking for if you are using a manual mode if you're using an auto mode you may not get what you are looking for but the camera will give you what the camera likes fine now kushagra has asked what is the recommendation for a beginner on camera uh, i'm not sure what you mean exactly if it is a camera uh, what model you are looking for or uh, whether it is full frame or uh, based on the sensor size uh, so I am not able to answer that uh, but based on my second module I guess uh, you would have come across a little bit of it Shabrinath is asking could you suggest the best lens to use in all types of settings well that is something which I will never be able to answer because uh, there is no such lens if there was such a lens then everyone would have purchased that and nothing else but most of the kit lens I would say will uh, suffice uh, you can use it for most of the conditions but uh, for low light settings uh, I don't think it will work good because most of the kit lenses will have an aperture setting of 3.5 to uh, 6 point something so what will happen is when you zoom in the aperture will vary and uh, not only that the aperture is low so obviously uh, for low light settings it is not so good 
but there are kit lenses uh, in higher end cameras where you'll get an aperture of four a constant aperture of four uh, but still it is at four so you cannot expect uh, the other kit lenses when it gives 3.5 at least in uh, full wide this will give only four so there are limitations for everything so you cannot say which one is the best so if you are looking for an all-round lens maybe you can go for a uh, lens that will give you a fixed aperture of maybe four that is a common one which is available with uh, how, how much ever tele you will get normally like if it's a full frame camera it will be 24 to 105 or even up to 120 you can get now coming to the queries on exposure amrita has asked what is iso that is based on the first module so my second module might have uh, cleared that doubt now linga bhavani has asked want to know more about white balance what you see here is an led bulb if you click a picture in this light you expect the output to be natural like this but if your picture looks like this then it is because your camera is not able to recognize the exact color this is mainly because colors are a reflection of light based on the color temperature that is like every light has a color temperature uh, for example if you look at the daylight it will have a more uh, blue tone but during uh, evenings and in the early mornings uh, that is sunset and sunrise uh, it will have a warm tone so the sunlight itself has a uh, different uh, color temperature based on the time but if you're using any other artificial lights, for example, flash, flash has a different uh, color temperature. But if you're using a tungsten bulb that has a different uh, color temperature, usually tungsten bulbs and uh, tungsten bulbs and halogens will have a color temperature of around 3200. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the cool lights will have a color temperature of around 5000, 6000 range. Fine. So uh, based on that, you will have to set your uh, white balance otherwise you will get a different color for your picture this is a tungsten bulb if this light falls on a white surface it will look yellowish or warm in tone if a picture is taken in this you will get the output like this you need to white balance using the camera settings to make it look natural since the method varies based on camera model i won't be able to explain it here there are also few presets available like tungsten, tube, sunlight, etc. Based on the situation, you can try it out. Usually, auto white balance, which is the default setting, would work fine. You may do manual white balancing if you feel your image is not producing natural color. If you go through your camera manual, you will know how your camera does the white balancing. Well, coming back, uh, Suharsh Chandra has asked live demonstration of exposure triangle would help us a lot. Viknesh has asked, uh, should know more about ISO aperture and shutter speed. Madhav also has said about like, uh, can you explain ISO with more examples? Sattvik has asked like, uh, it would have been very much helpful for understanding by uh, showing false image and uh, proper image of aperture and ISO. Shreya has uh, asked like how to control all three elements of the exposure triangle simultaneously. Uh, Linka Bhavani has asked more about shutter speed so and uh, its uses. Uh, well, I'll touch upon that one. Let's have a look at how it works uh, in uh, real terms. Fine. Let's see how exposure triangle works. Here the image is slightly darker. So if I want to increase the brightness, I can adjust any of the three. One is the shutter speed, otherwise the aperture and the third one is ISO. Now since the subject is not moving, it's a stationary one, I can actually reduce the shutter speed. Shutter is not my priority, I can reduce it because it's not moving. Now my aperture I can increase. If I increase the aperture, I'll get a narrow depth of field. But right now it's at 1.8, that is the maximum I have in this. So further than this, I cannot increase. Now I have two options, my shutter speed or the ISO. Now ISO is only 250, I can increase to even up to 4000. But if it's a normal DSLR, if it's a crop sensor, you can increase up to 800. So I'll increase the ISO. Now the ISO is increased to 
800 in 800 it's fine i don't have much grains this is one option now suppose if the iso was 800 and still if it was darker next option is to reduce the shutter speed now my shutter speed is at 125 if i reduce further it's fine because it's on a tripod but if you're doing handheld shoot you'll have to be careful for normal conditions below 125 you are going to get blurry images hands are not so steady so make sure that you don't go below 125 now i have reduced it to 50 it's fine but the images become brighter so to compensate that again you can adjust the aperture so from f 1.8 i am reducing it to 2.8 and if I want to make it brighter, I can increase the ISO or reduce the shutter speed other than this. So how do you actually decide what is your priority, whether it is a shutter speed or it's a aperture or it's the ISO. ISO should be the last priority because it's going to affect your quality. Above 800 on a normal DSLR will be a problem if you are keen on quality, but for normal purposes, for website and Instagram and all, even up to 3200 or 4000 you can increase, you may not find too much of grains. So we'll leave ISO below 800. So next option is either shutter speed or the aperture. Well, uh, before going further, let me speak about shutter speed. Uh, shutter speed is given priority when you are trying to take subjects in motion. That is explained earlier, but once again, I'll take you through that. If you notice this picture, you can see that the legs are not so visible. It's mainly because of the low shutter speed. So moving actions, if you try to take using low shutter speed, you will get a blurred image, which is not good always. At times you might require it to show the motion. But here, this is not a situation where you would require a slow shutter speed. So what we will do is we'll increase the shutter speed now I have increased the shutter speed to more than 1600. See, the legs are so crisp and clear. So even though uh, the subject is in motion, you have a clear picture. Now for moving objects, I told you the shutter speed has to be high. Suppose if this subject was moving, then I had to increase my shutter speed. If I increase my shutter speed to around 400, these are output that you're going to get. So now my ISO is the maximum. My shutter speed is the least I can get because of the moving object. Now the only option left is aperture. So I can increase the aperture to 1.8, but still it is dark. So you have to manage either the shutter speed or the ISO. As I said, if the subject is moving, then you have to sacrifice the quality. You have to increase the ISO. Now the ISO is at 2500. Suppose if it's a fast moving object, then you have to make sure that your shutter speed is still higher. But for this lighting condition, unless you sacrifice the quality and increase the ISO, it is not possible. Now when to use aperture as a priority. Now if you notice here, the big bird is in focus, right? And if you look at the smaller one, it's completely out of focus. So what can you do to make both in focus? That is where you have to make sure that your aperture is lower. So right now I'll change the aperture. I lower it to 5.6, but the image is darker. So I'll reduce the shutter speed. Since the object is not moving, I have the luxury of reducing the shutter speed. Right now the shutter speed is at 50 and my ISO is at 2500. You can see both the birds are almost in focus. So if you are shooting a group of people, then please keep in mind that you have to reduce the aperture. That means higher f-stop. Now I am shooting it at 5.6, but for a group of people, 5.6 or 8 or anything below that would be better. But if you want a narrow depth of field, just like how initially we did, where one bird is in focus and the other is not in focus, then you have to go for high aperture. So if I make it at 1.8, you can notice that 
only one bird is in focus. Since it is too bright, I am reducing the ISO. So my ISO, ISO is at 400. You can see how it looks. Uh, well, uh, the next question by Madhav is all about how much camera quality affects the quality of a photograph. Is it only a good camera which creates a good photograph? Uh, would like to get more detailed info. Uh, well, it, when it comes to the quality of the photograph, it again depends on how you define it. Uh, mostly, it's, if uh, for me, it is about the sharpness, the uh, crispness of the image, as well as uh, the color and a uh, lot of other factors. So it depends on various factors. Uh, when you say about camera, it depends on the sensor, it depends on the sensor size, it depends on the lens because uh, the same company, different makes, has different quality. So you'll have to think about that one. And a lot of factors will affect the picture quality. Then again, the lighting. So that is also very important. So if the lighting is very less, obviously you'll have to increase the ISO that will actually affect the quality. So you cannot say which uh, camera can give you a better photograph. Uh, it's all about how you make use of your equipment, fine. And of course, uh, there are certain equipments which will give you better quality, but only if you know how to use it. Now, coming back to the next question, Sai Mathri has asked, uh, later after taking a picture and while presenting it everyone does editing to make the picture look better and presentable so i would like to know if it's uh, really required and if it's required i would like to know how could we edit to bring out a presentable picture uh, well as a camera person uh, when i was uh, doing my uh, course on fashion photography one thing that i uh, that strike me what he uh, taught me is about like a camera person is a camera person and an editor is an editor. So if you want to be a good camera person, then you have to see to it that you take a good picture. Uh, editing is an editor's job. So you have to decide whether you want to be a camera person or an editor. Well, of course, you can do both. And, and editing, editing an image will actually enhance the image. So editing should not be just the uh, complete thing. Uh, it's more about taking a good photograph and enhancing using editing. It's not just take any, any photograph, no matter how good or bad it is, then sit on editing and uh, make it better. So as a photographer, your thing should be get a good photograph. Fine. So editing is only for enhancing. Please keep that in mind. And if you want to edit, you have different softwares. You can use any of the softwares and you can enhance it. I have both uh, Photoshop as well as uh, Affinity with me. Uh, but since I'm used to Photoshop, maybe I'll show a bit of uh, working on Photoshop. I open an image in Photoshop. This uh, looks slightly darker, so I'll work on the levels. I normally use the shortcut yeah, Command L. So I open the levels. I can increase the midtones a bit. Hit OK. Then I'll open the raw filter using command shift a once i open the raw filter i have a lot of options available so i can increase the contrast i can increase the brightness that uh, i can increase the exposure i can work on the blacks or the shadows or even highlights i feel that the white balance is not proper so i'll work on the color. I'll change the color temperature to slightly bluish. Then if I want, I can work on individual colors here. We can see the difference, what it makes. I can even change the luminance, that is the brightness of it. Well, for me, this looks uh, okay. Uh, maybe if I, if I want, I can work on the vibrance so you can see what difference it makes or even the saturation you can make it black and white. So if I make it black and white, I'll work a little more on these parameters.
and hit OK. So this is how it's going to look. Further, I can crop this image. I will press C and I can crop it this way and hit enter. So this is my personal choice. Everyone will have their own likes and dislikes. Uh, so don't ever worry about it, whatever you want. So it should be based on what you're looking for that you should be working on and it will be based on your taste. Well, uh, Padmini has asked when to use monochrome themes while clicking pictures. Uh, personally, I would uh, not do a monochrome uh, shoot because while editing, I can change it. Even though I said editing is meant only for enhancing, not uh, that is not the complete thing. Uh, while taking photos, you should make sure that everything is done uh, properly. But when it comes to monochrome, what I would do is I would I will I will take it in color itself. While editing, I'll make it black and white. But there are some people who would uh, prefer monochrome. Uh, so if you are a person like that, maybe you can uh, go for it. Uh, mostly it's about contrast. So if you have more contrasting uh, uh, frames, then maybe you can think about monochrome. But it's all about a personal taste. So you'll have to identify areas where you can go for monochrome. Fine. Now coming to the question by Srishti Agarwal, I was not able to clearly understand the flash part in things to be taken care of as we have always learned that flash is used at night time or when there is no light. Also I think that using more examples that is images while explaining a concept will help it in learning better. Uh, well you are right uh, but flash is not something that is uh, that should be used only at night. Uh, I have maybe if you have gone through the section on lighting you would know you will be using lights to fill the shadows so instead of having dark shadows you try to fill it and get a pleasing image but that is not always the case you should know when to use what so if you feel that flash is required then you can use it even at times during broad daylight there might be times where one side is fully dark because of the harsh sunlight so to eliminate that you can fill it with flashes but you should know where to use and how to use it because if you use a flash exactly at the same uh, uh, angle from where the sunlight is coming then obviously you are going to add up the uh, light and it will actually expose more so you should know where to use the flash also you can use it on the other direction where the uh, shadows are and you can fill it and make the picture look better so this is how it is done when you're using a flash during daytime. Uh, well, uh, the next section of questions uh, is more about the equipment. Uh, Kushagra has asked which camera is preferred for phones. Uh, well, my third, uh, second module, I guess, has covered that. So I guess you are clear by now. And Vishnu Pratip has asked, like, how can I select a camera in my choice? So that again is covered on the module three. And Hari Shankar has asked, I'm using mobile for taking photos, interested to shift for using DSLR cameras. My question is that what is the best DSLR camera for beginners? Uh, well, as a beginner, I would suggest not to invest on high-end cameras. Uh, so because you'll be unnecessarily spending on it and uh, finally you will be using just for sharing it through uh, social media. So there's no point in spending a lot on this and by the time you uh, learn completely maybe you would have uh, exhausted your camera so better go for the basic level cameras uh, but invest on good lenses if you wish to you will get amazing output fine now the next question by KS uh, Suhas is about can you please uh, help us take better pictures from mobile phone please provide us some assignments and help us shoot the pictures better well, assignments is something maybe you can think of yourself. You, uh, no one else has to uh, give you assignments. You can try doing it yourself and find out different ways how to improve yourself based on what you have learned from this course. Uh, Harit Narang has asked, like, I would love to learn more about photography on one's phone if, if possible. Some tips with respect to aperture and certain skills that eventually lead to better picture, either displaying different shots or something. Well, the basic of photography will remain the same no matter what you use if you have the settings please make use of it 
once you know about the exposure triangle and if your phone or anything that any camera that you use will support or will let you you make use of these uh, settings then you can apply the same uh, theory there and you will get better photographs fine now coming to the questions on dslrs anthony has asked how can we differentiate an slr and a dslr how can we find it by just seeing explain single lens uh, reflex system well the difference between slr and dslr is basically that slrs are uh, normally cameras that shoot in films fine uh, in one look i don't think you will be able to make out the difference unless you uh, know how it works so usually an slr will have a knob that winds so unless you wind it it won't uh, take you to the next film so if you are using a film you will have a knob that uh, that will actually be used to wind the film fine uh, so that is something maybe in one look you can figure out whether it is a it is an slr or a dslr now to explain about the system it's slightly complicated i have to go into the details and it will take more time and due to the lack of time i won't be able to do that uh, these days you have DS dslrs is more about digital as i said the other one is uh, about film this is digital so everything will be captured in digital instead of on a film it is actually uh, through the sensor it is being taken to the memory card so the other one will be stored in a film and uh, there's no sensor there it is directly coming to the film the light is falling onto the film and it is captured on the film uh, but a dslr is cap uh, it captures the uh, the image through the sensor it's a sensor that detects it and it will be stored on a memory card fine and uh, manjanath as as bit specific on dslr harshit as as will you explain the settings of a dslr camera in detail i guess uh, other modules have explained since the question was based on the first module i believe the rest of the modules have helped you uh, to understand it better coming to harshit kumar harshit kumar's uh, question more about more information about dslr again uh, brijit joseph is asking need more uh, information on dslr i'm not quite sure like uh, what is that more information that you're looking for uh, information as such it's like plenty there's a whole lot to speak about but then due to the lack of time i won't i won't be able to do that i'm sorry for that uh, but all these modules and uh, today's videos i hope have helped you understand a little more than what you knew already so maybe these are just the basics and this entire course is for the beginners so i believe like whatever you have learned it will be useful uh, throughout your career on photography all the best thank you